going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel you know who it is by now Jimothy. now ladies and gents i have my updated plunder patrol deck out laid out for you and the reason i've done this is because i actually attended a remote deals local on the weekend um it was on sunday and i actually participated in a i believe it was like a 22 or 23 man event which was kind of unprecedented for that specific uh, remote dual local now the reason i've got an updated deck list is because i did not do too well in a uh, remote dual local i um i only managed to get my setup done the day before and i only tested it literally the night before and then the day after i just jumped straight into the remote dual i didn't really mess around with my deck um, there were a few cards here that you can see in front of you that I didn't have my have in my deck at the time And uh, I just kind of went into it blind just kind of seeing what the remote duel was like and it was more to test the setup But then obviously to participate in an event which was really interesting. So what I thought I would do is just go through the event, ladies and gents, and just kind of let you guys know how I got on. So it was a five round um, tournament um, before top before it cut to top cut, basically. Um, and round one, game one, I played against Zoo Outlich. Uh, I struggled. I went second, I lost the die roll, and I didn't have the correct attributes to go into the monster that I wanted to. And on top of that, he managed to put up a double A Zeus, backed up with a load of trap cards in the back row. And that deck is really scary, by the way. Um, game two in the same match, um, I actually went first. I had, an, I had a decent setup, but I did not ash the Fire Formation Tanky, mainly because I thought it was a bit of a bluff. So I let the tanky go through. Um, he managed to combo off and then end up on the Zeus again, which I could do nothing about, um, along with a few um, break, break your board style going second cards. Um, to be honest, when I spoke to him after the game had finished, he said to me, if you'd ash the tanky, I would have lost that game. And it was just, it was literally that. So that was on my bad. Um, round two, I managed to get a buy. Uh, round three, I drew in time against Shadow in game one. Uh, I managed to get Drag Eye out and just basically just, just, dwindled him out of resources game two he managed to go first and he just set up window basically and i just couldn't play through the window um every time i outed it he just recovered with shadow schism and he just kept playing and sending my cards to the graveyard which was a little bit frustrating and he, we just ran out of time it was a very very grindy game i probably could have conceded and then just went first but um i just let the game play out just to basically make sure my setup was um rife and i'll go through some of the pros and cons with remote dueling um in a moment so game uh, round three sorry round four i lost the die roll against um virtual world i got vfd there was say no more about that vfd ae because of auto winning that 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 deck it was crazy and um, game two i went first but opened zero plunders had a couple of hand traps um but it, it, virtual world can easily play through a couple of disruptions it's not even a problem depending on what disruptions there are um so i played for a couple of hand traps and it ended on a vfd after doing a bit of damage uh, and that was li literally the game ladies and gents and then game round five i played against virtual world again got vfd again as i lost the die roll um game one and then game two ended up clearing my board loads and back or forth and then by the time we got to the end of that game two it was time anyway and it already run the first round so that was my basic report so just from what i did with regards to the, the the remote dual locals it was a lot of fun i will say it was a very very long day um and there are a few pros and cons a couple of times the connection went and it took a couple of minutes to get set back up and that's obviously eating into your time you are allocated time to be able to have a bit of leeway in time in terms of that but for the most part you just have to kind of play um also there are a few connection issues and everybody's camera quality is not the same um it can take a while especially with me playing plunder patrols a lot of my opponents did not know what my cards did so i spent a lot of time explaining every single interaction that happened and then i would explain it once and then they would ask me again and it just it, it was a bit of a grind in that way um but also it was a great way to play i met quite a few new players which was really really good uh, and it was really enjoyable now with regards to the deck ladies and gents i jumped in blind and i was a little bit naive to be honest i didn't know what quite what to expect i thought to myself that i was going to be hit a whole host of kind of like decks but i literally just came up against meta i played zoo Aldich, i played shadows and i played two virtual worlds which is basically meta and um, as well as my buy so what i've decided to do is change up my actual main deck a little bit now the plunder patrol lineup whoops the plunder patrol lineup is pretty straightforward you play three of every plunder at the moment um i play three of the field spell 
three emblem and I do believe I play one ship shape shipping I'm potentially gonna bump that up to two depending on how this goes I did not have ash in the uh, main deck previously but I've put ash in mainly because I can go into my brand um, by having Ash in Graveyard, which really does help. Also, I had a um, Ghost Bow instead of Scoremeister. Um, Scoremeister is a nice addition. It's not once per turn, and also it is a dark attribute, which allows me to go into my uh, Plunder Patrol XYZ. Um, on top of that, I've actually included Forbidden Chalice. Now, the reason I put that in is because VFD, a lot of the um, virtual players that I was playing against were activating VFD in the standby phase, which is a little bit risky because uh, at any point they could have played into Gamma, but they did have Chuche on field at times, um, so they would have been able to get away from that. But at least with Forbidden Chalice, I can remove the VFD threat um, and be able to just at least leave my white beard on board and then play on my opponent's turn. Um, it, it could be infinite in permanence, but I feel like Forbidden Chalice is a little bit more. It's a little bit more flexible in this deck, so to speak. Um, everything else is pretty standard. I don't run the three desires mainly because I don't like desires into desires, basically. Um, and I, I've always found that the two desires works fine, as well as my upstart goblin. So it's got a little bit of a draw engine, along with Blackbeard. Um, you should be um, fine in drawing cards. But for the most part, ladies and gents, this deck performed okay. It's nowhere near meta can, uh, contender. And if I did have some of the more power cards, like um, for the Forbidden Droplets, for example, I would have been able to do a lot more. I would have been able to break a lot more boards, um, so to speak, because a lot of the things that I were coming up against were the typical the boards that you would see, but I would have potentially had it out with them. And the way that this deck functions, you can play on your opponent's turn anyway. And so literally normal summoning a white beard as well as clearing their board, it, it actually can be good enough depending on how you decide to play the deck. Also, I'm actually going to put in a bit of a tech card. I'm going to leave it on screen for you guys now. And this is going to definitely go in the main deck. It's called Earth Shattering Event. So what that card does is if a card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, I can shuffle one card back into the deck from the graveyard. And for, for the rest of the turn, um, effects are turned off in the graveyard basically. Uh, it's, it's it's a crazy card and especially with this deck because the plunder patrol extra deck monsters don't actually get summoned correctly you can't then summon them from the graveyard once they end up in there so being able to shuffle back one of your own monsters whilst also preventing your opponent from playing is just absolutely fantastic and the earth shattering event is a um is a uh sorry is a continuous spell so it, it does really really help i um, sorry let me just read the card the card uh, text correctly so if this card is sent from if a card is sent from the deck to the graveyard target one card in either player's graveyard shuffle it into the deck also neither player can send cards from the deck to the graveyard for the rest of the turn now with regards to that virtual world it would just literally cripple them they would have to pop it with their chuche if they manage to get chuche established early but if you if you manage to do this correctly you can actually shut down their turn um, which is really really interesting because virtual world like to send a lot of cards as cost uh, and it's a nice matchup and the way that things are looking if I do enter the tournament again I am definitely going to be coming up against some more virtual worlds so um, it is what it is so what I'm going to do ladies and gents I'm just going to quickly um, show you my extra deck it hasn't really changed for the most part um, and then I'm just going to open my OTS pack that I got for you guys so just give me a moment Okay, ladies and gents, so this is the extra deck. Now, for the most part, the extra deck is pretty solid. There's probably a few additions or things that I would take out, most notably uh, Geomathmech Final Sigma. Um, and the reason why I'm going to take him out, I haven't actually decided what I'm going to put in next. Uh, but Geomathmech Final Sigma, in uh, after testing, is kind of turning into a win more card. Basically, if you can establish him, you can probably establish um, some, some of your Plunder uh, Patrol monsters anyway. Um, most notably, Brand to go in for the OTK. So going into Geomathmech Final Sigma, isn't always isn't always necessarily needed mainly because it is a win more card now it does combo nicely with white or a whale however I'm thinking about dropping white or a whale as well anyway because going second what I find it is obviously your opponent has a lot of board presence anyway so they're gonna have negations up anyway so if white or a whale decides to try and activate its effect and it gets popped uh, it's it's basically useless. So those are two cards that I'm considering to take out. I haven't really thought too much as to what I'm gonna put in. But White Orwell is a nice option. I probably would side deck it 
specifically because it can be a bit of a blowout if your opponent is not aware of it. For the rest, they're pretty standard, they're pretty solid. Abyss Dweller is really good in this format. Um, it's basically just, especially in Plunder Patrols where it gets the uh, the attack and defense boost because normally um, somebody would just normal summon a monster big enough to just beat over Abyss Dweller and then carry on about their day. But with it being the boost from being made with two water monsters, it can be a bit of a problem, especially with cards like Virtual World running around and um, Owdlitch, for example. Abyss Dweller just shuts that down. So definitely a inclusion that I'm gonna be keeping in this day. Um, everything else is pretty standard though. I have thought about upping the number of lists and I've thought about upping the number of um, Blackbeard but with the earth shattering event on the way I should be able to shuffle one of these back in to be able to continuously loop them and I didn't go for it ladies and gents but I have got a bit of a side deck which I'm still testing at the moment um, it does contain effect Vela to be able to effectively go into lists without have to, having to depend on my opponent and I do control I do have a um, I do have some Droll and Lockbird just to shut down the virtual deck um, as quickly as possible. But what I what I've found playing this deck, ladies and gents, it is by no means the finished article. And we know this because we're getting more support, but mainly because the correct attributes aren't all there for you to summon and utilize. So when I played against Zoo Outlitch, for example, I couldn't go into any of my extra monsters because they just had all Earths on field and it was just had a lotus trap pod. So I was literally stuck by summoning Blackbeard and just hoping that I drawed into one of my hand traps to be able to use it and then have that in graveyard to then go into one of my other extra deck uh, plunder patrol monsters and by then i've probably lost the game but in saying that drag eye is definitely something that you want to establish really early uh, he is a bit of a problem against the shadow player um when i uh, beat him game one it literally drag eye just beat him down and just negated every critical play that he wanted to do so very very powerful card definitely inclusion that i won't be taking out of this deck um, but for the most part the rest is pretty standard just white or well and geo mathmet final sigma which are a bit of an issue to be honest and sometimes you do get locked into plunder patrols anyway so you can't necessarily summon them so we'll see but anyway ladies and gents just before we finish i do have a tournament pack 14 fingers crossed for some oh, let me turn that around for you guys fingers crossed for some great pulls may the pool guys be with me okay boy oh boy Ugh. we have an infinity general Ugh. a atlantean dragoons and then finally a cattle call not the best OTS 14 not coming in clutch. Infinity General is decent. I'll probably throw that into uh, my Infinity core that I've got hanging around somewhere. But it is what it is. So ladies and gents, we find ourselves at the end of another video. I definitely will be engaging in some more remote duels for you guys. And I potentially might even film some of my games depending on how I get on. But like I said, if you do enjoy this content, you know what to do by now. Hit that like button, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I will definitely, definitely see you guys on the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.